Hey guys, it's officially the end of December and of 2016. I'm proud to say that I finished my Goodreads reading challenge for the year, which was to read 60 books. And I exceeded that challenge by reading 70 books. I think the main reason I was able to read so many books is because I participated in the Summer Booktubeathon and it just got me really hyped to read. To kind of prove this point, I read nine books this month. I started off the month by reading all six books of the Vampire Academy series. I was very reluctant to pick up the series at first because Vampire Academy, really? But it wasn't what I expected and I'm very happy about that. I ended up falling in love with this series. My favorite book out of all of them was Shadow Kissed. My least favorite was definitely Spiritbound. I just really did not care for the pacing of this book and I only gave it a 3 out of 5 stars where the rest of the series all got 5 out of 5 stars. But overall I really and truly loved this series and I think Rose became one of my favorite characters. She was just so caring and selfless but also kind of cruel and badass at the same time. I think my favorite thing about every book in the series was the fact that all of the main action happened within the last 80 to 100 pages. I think my least favorite thing about this series is the fact that I can normally figure out who the bad guy was about halfway through the book. I think the only exception to that was Last Sacrifice, but I was convinced it was a certain character and it ended up being someone that I least expected until like the very last couple chapters. After I finished Vampire Academy, I decided to participate in the Holiday Booktubeathon for the first time, which was a lot more laid back than the Summer Booktubeathon. Mainly, we just had Twitter sprints and Instagram challenges, which I'm very happy about how my photos turned out. But during the Booktubeathon, I read three more books. The first one was Freaks by Amanda Hawking. This book is about a girl named Mara who travels with a supernatural traveling circus. And really, even though she loves her life with her friends and family and seeing new places, she really just wants to have an ordinary life. And she finally gets the chance to have an ordinary life when they have their next show in Coldry, Louisiana, where she meets Gabe. To me, this book was very unique. It was kind of a blend of fantasy and contemporary and it was also very mysterious. I never would have guessed what happened to actually happen. And all the action happened like within the last couple of chapters, which was like the last 20 pages. And you would think that would make the book feel very rushed, but I think she actually tied it up very nicely. And I'm not really sure if this is a standalone or part of a series, but I think it ended in such a way that it could be either. I have a spoiler free review for this book if you want to go check that out. I'll leave it linked in the description box below. And this book comes out January 3rd, so by the time this video is going out, this book should already be released. Another thing I love about all of Amanda Hawking's books is the covers are freaking beautiful. You can't really tell it because of my crappy camera, but I love the color scheme of this book. The second book I read is a manga, Seraph of the End, Volume 1, by Takia Kagami and Yamato Yamamoto. You can tell I've had to say those two names way too much. This is one of my favorite anime series of all time, and I decided for Christmas to pick myself up the first volume of the manga. And I'm super happy I did because I love the artwork and I love being able to visit the characters in book form. Seraph of the End starts out in the point of view of our main character, Yu, who is only 12 years old and is living in a vampire colony where him and a bunch of other kids are harvested for their blood. But one day, him and his adoptive brother, Mika, decide to get the rest of their adopted siblings out of there. And a lot of stuff goes down and only Yu is able to escape. Then a time skips to when Yu is 16 years old and he's joined the Demon Company and wants to become a part of the Vampire Extermination Units. But Yu is a very closed off person so he has to meet some conditions before he can join the Demon Company. 
I gave this manga a 5 out of 5 stars. And if you want to pick up this manga series, I highly recommend it for anyone over the ages of 14 because there is a lot of blood and death. It's not as gruesome as the anime, but it still is pretty gruesome. And the last book I read this month was Jessie's Girl by Miranda Kennelly. This book is about a girl named Maya, and I hope I'm saying her name right, and how for her high school career shadowing day, she tells everyone that she wants to be a rock star. So she ends up shadowing Jessie Scott, a famous country music singer. There's only a couple problems. Jessie isn't the most easy to get along with person, and Maya doesn't really care for his music very much. I wasn't sure how I was going to like this book at first because I thought it was told over a 24 hour time period, but only the first half of the book is told within 24 hours and the second half of the book is told in time skips between weeks and months. I think the relationship in this book progressed a little too fast, but the book itself was very dialogue driven, so you do get to learn a lot about the characters before they actually get together. So that kind of makes up for it. Another problem I have with this book is all but one character that we actually meet is likable. Let's be honest, that doesn't happen in real life, especially when you're in the entertainment industry. I did love Jesse and Maya's characters, and I felt that both of them were very sarcastic and funny, and Jesse was really good at putting them in awkward, uncomfortable situations, which I kind of loved. I gave Jessie's Girl a 3 out of 5 stars. Well, those are the 9 books that I read this month and oh my goodness, I have no clue how I did it at all. But I'm hoping I can keep up with this pace because I'm going to try to read 70 books this year for my Goodreads reading goal and yeah, that's, oh god, just thinking about it, I don't know. Fingers crossed that I'm able to do it. Let me know in the comments below how many books you guys plan to read for this year. I think 70 books is going to be either a little too optimistic or just right for me. Well, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.